This is the first of a number of videos that relate to Young and Friedman's University Physics 12th edition. Um, that book is divided up, or could be divided up, into to multi sections. It, it's available in multi volumes. You can either buy the the large volume that has all of the sections, or you can buy the individual sections. The first section of uh, this physics book, University Physics, is on mechanics, which has to do with motion um, and that sort of thing, gravitation. Uh, the second part uh, then goes into um, electro uh, magnetic type uh, things uh, and there is a third volume also that's available if you buy it in multi-volume form but uh, this video begins the first part on mechanics and deals with the first chapter which as you might expect deals with introductory type uh, issues and this video especially is on the first two sections of the first chapter uh, which I'm calling introductory matters now, I, I may have missed it, but I did not see a nice, crisp definition of physics in that first section. And so I went to Webster's Dictionary, which defines physics as the science that deals with matter and energy and their interactions. Now, uh, actually, that, that last bit and their interactions probably blurs over a bit into chemistry. Physics deals more with matter in motion. It deals with um, things like... Um, uh, uh, velocity, it deals with force, it deals with, with uh, momentum, things that, you know, what happens when you spin something. Um, it deals with uh, forces like electromagnetism uh, or uh, nuclear forces. Uh, and so uh, that, that last bit and their interactions kind of blurs off into chemistry because chemistry is really about the interaction of matter with matter. And so maybe uh, by interactions here, we have to understand things like movement and uh, collision. That sort of thing is what physics deals with, rather than uh, the combinations of matter uh, into compounds. That's chemistry. So physics deals more with motion and with forces. So um, that gives you some sense of what physics is, if you did, didn't know. Um, the first section is called The Nature of Physics which you might have expected a crisp definition. Again, maybe I missed it, um, but I didn't, uh, didn't jump out at me. Uh, physics is an experimental science. Um, so say Young and Friedman. I'm, I, I, although part, a part of me um, resists this because there is theoretical physics as well uh, that can be done in an office with a brain. Uh, you have to be really smart to do that level of physics. But OK, fine. Physics is about, uh, has often been about uh, experimenting, um, so you you want to prove your theories, or, or, or often we can't prove theories, but you want to test them and see if they need to be modified. What is a theory? A theory is an explanation of natural phenomenon based upon observation and accepted fundamental principles. Now, a theory is not um, sometimes in popular language you talk of a theory as well. That's just a theory. Um, you might say that of a hypothesis. Well, that's just a hypothesis. But a theory, actually, uh, you don't call something a scientific theory unless it has had substantial support from ex experimentation. Something You start off with a hypothesis that you then you test the hypothesis. This is scientific method. Uh, but it doesn't get to be called a theory unless you've had substantial confirmation um, uh, of, of the fundamental hypothesis. Um, there is a range of validity often for um, your your answers. Uh, so the range of validity for a theory or for a um, uh, for a particular suggestion uh, tells it has to do with the situations in which that theory is valid. There may be some situations where the theory is not uh, valid. Some situations in which one theory works, and other situations in which another theory works. Uh, obviously, well, maybe not obviously. But a lot of physicists have been in, in search of a so-called grand unified theory uh, for many, many years that would, for example, encompass all the basic forces. Right now, physics speaks of four basic forces, gravitation, uh, electromagnetic, uh, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force. A grand unified theory in which those four could be combined into a single uh, theory 
uh, is something that at least some physicists have long sought after. Others really don't care. Um, section 2 of chapter 1 uh, lays out a framework for solving physics problems. This is very helpful, although the implementation is always a lot more difficult than the, uh, than the theory of how to solve a physics problem. Uh, but first, identify the relevant concepts. What are the, um, what is the data that you're given in the problem? What kinds of things have been told to you? What, what do you know? Um, set up the problem. What are you trying to find? Uh, if you have all the data written out there, um, uh, what, what is it that you're looking for? Sometimes drawing a diagram. I, I often find that drawing a diagram um, is very helpful uh, in setting up a problem. And then execute your solution. Go ahead and, and uh, see if you can solve for what you're looking for. And then after you've come up with a solution, does it make sense? Um, use a little common sense. Sometimes you come up with an answer uh, that just doesn't make any sense. And so you know you've made a mistake somewhere. And so this is the process that Young and Friedman use throughout uh, this very large book um, uh, as an attempt to um, answer various problems. Models. A model is a simplified version of a physical system, uh, a system that would be too complicated to analyze in full detail. Um, oftentimes, uh, the real world is far more complex uh, than any um, uh, mathematical equation could actually account for. Uh, and so what, what is sometimes done then is you, you create a model that is not exact, it's not, it, it's not as complicated as the real world, but it, it allows you to get in the ballpark of a solution. Or, or it gives you a, a starting point from which you can then complexify you know, the situation uh, by adding friction in later or, or whatever the complicating factor is, air resistance. You know. First you do the model of dropping the rock uh, without air resistance and then you have to you know, go back and complexify it because life is, is complex. So sometimes these, these models are idealized. You might examine something as if it were a particle, a point object, whereas in fact, you know, we don't, I couldn't see a point object. Everything that I can see has, you know, substantial, you know, mass. And so um, uh, sometimes we use a model to try to um, approach a problem uh, because the, the full, precise version of it would simply would not be practical um, to, to try to solve. So those are the first two sections of Young and Friedman's University Physics, 12th edition.